Okay, day one, ground zero, filming, maxing out. I'm here with Maddie Rogers. Maddie, start with the basics. How old are you? I am 42 years young. 42 years young. And where do you live? I live on the Gold Coast. Um, yeah, been there for the last uh, 11 years now. And the Gold Coast, what do you love about the Gold Coast? Oh, what's well, not to love? It's, it's uh, you know, so diverse. You, you know, five minutes you're in the most beautiful rainforest in hinterland. The other, five minutes the other way you're on the best beaches in the world. And, you know, we've got great restaurants and cafes and shopping precincts, you know, that are just amazing. So normally getting to know people, you, you get to know their nicknames. Have you got a nickname that we should be aware of? <laughs> I do, and that nickname is Rat. And how did that come about? It, um, the PG version is someone um, said I look like a rat, someone overheard it and that's stuck since I was 17 years old. You've had it for a while. Mm. So you've had a pretty long football career. Tell yep. us a bit about your football career. Uh, I had a great career uh, from a time perspective and you know had, had you know 17 years of you know traveling the world and, and playing the game I loved in, in rugby league and rugby union. You know started out at Cronulla, my dad's old club and then you know, got to hang out with uh, the Wallabies for five years and travel around the world playing, you know, in places like Italy and South America and the UK and it was just amazing. Um, you know, got to play in a Rugby World Cup and then, you know, fortunately for me, um, you know, I grew up on the Gold Coast, so, you know, the Gold Coast Titans formed and I got the opportunity to come back and be a foundation member at that club. So I got to come back to the place I love and I wanted to retire um, at um, and got to finish my sporting career, you know, on the Gold Coast. So. I've uh, been here ever since and I uh, love it. So it's a, there's a lot to cram into a football career. There's mm. so much in there. Have you got any highlights that you think worth sharing? Highlights? Yeah, highlights of my career, um, there's many, um, but there, there are a few things that really probably stick in my mind. And, and it's when I first got picked to play for Australia um, in rugby league. Um, it was, you know, my dad captained Australia in rugby league. So, you know, I remember looking through the the books of in years gone by of how many father and sons had played for Australia and there was bugger all and, and I just thought it was stacked against me so it was a real big um, goal of mine to, to uh, sort of tick that box so I remember when I got picked it was just such a relief and, and such a joy to be able to sort of put on that Australian jersey and then, then went on to win a World Cup in Rugby League which was probably another highlight. Obviously playing the Rugby World Cup um, was pretty special but I would say, you know, when you lose a World Cup in double overtime to um, our arch enemy England, um, it was uh, a bit of a low light, <laughs> to be honest, that loss. So a lot of people know you as Matt Rogers, the football player. Yep. Uh, I know you as Matt Rogers, the family man. Tell us a bit about your family. Yeah, I've got four, four beautiful kids. Well, two of them aren't kids anymore. Two of them are 22 and, and eight, or 21 and 18. Uh, and I have... Um, two younger children, 11 and 10. Um, you know, beautiful wife, Chloe, who, you know, although has achieved a lot in her career through modelling and TV and all that sort of stuff, I tell you, she's, she's the best mum on the planet. You know, I mean, I'm probably biased, but we've been through a lot with our kids, you know, and particularly with Max, uh, who's autistic. Um, you know, the way that she's uh, held the family together and, and, you know, without her, I don't think our family would be as tight as it is. So, you know, I, I love, the environment that we've created, I love the support that we all give each other and I love the way that the families rally behind each other at our, at our times of struggle. So four kids, it's a lot going on, how would your kids describe you? <laughs> how would my kids describe me? That is, um, I, you know, they, they know when they're in trouble. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, think that, I think they would say I'm fair but I think they'd also say that I'm hard. Um, but they'd say I'm loving and caring as well, you know. I'm, I'm, a bit of a softie. Yeah, I'm definitely a bit of a softie and the girls know that. Probably the boys don't get it as much as the girls. <laughs> <laughs> so in 2009, you started 4ASD Kids. Tell us a bit of the backstory on 4ASD Kids, why you started it up. Yeah, so we started 4ASD Kids a long time ago now. It's been nine years that we've been operating and um, it was born out of a, a real need in the community. We, we, when Max was diagnosed with autism, we were really searching for answers. We didn't have any idea of what to do. Uh, we were fortunate enough that in our area, there was a school that was specifically designed um, for children with autism, uh, an early intervention program that would help them develop and integrate into mainstream school. Um, we found that through an autism advisor um, and uh, we applied and we got in, you know, there was a two year wait list um, and we got in and I was blown away and I sat with the, the owner of the school and I said, why are we here 
when there was a two-year wait list. She said, oh, well, we've interviewed everyone before you and they, they can't come in because it's too expensive for them, so they can't afford it. Uh, three months down the track, Maxie was a different child. It was amazing the change that we'd seen. And we were just heartbroken at the fact that, could you imagine being one of those parents that didn't have access to this because of money? So we thought, well, we could raise some money, we could use our charity for the powers of, our, our, our celebrity for the powers of good, and we could, um, we could raise some funds and steer that money towards our families that are in need. So you've helped a lot of families, you've raised over $2 million through 4ASD Kids in the last nine years. About a year ago we talked about what do we do next with 4ASD Kids and how we take it to the next level. So we've been working on this TV show for over a year. Tell us a bit about the TV show. Yeah, so the show um, was born out of our conversations in relation to sort of how we, you know, grow this and scale this to something we can reach more people. And, you know, the ultimate goal is to, to reach more people, not, not so they know about us, it's just so we can help more people. And, um, you know, having the opportunity to, I guess, mirror, um, you know, the journey that we have with Max, you know, from the beginning to where we are now, uh, with the journey of someone that's trying to achieve something that's just seemed so hard and you know and and I, and I you know when we racked our brains and we thought about it you know we thought if we could follow someone who's never done sort of an, an iron distance triathlon or something like that uh, I just I know what I felt like when I finished it it was so much adulation and joy I thought we could mirror that journey you know we could sort of because it was like us with, with Max. We had no idea in the beginning. We were sort of like, how do, how do we even do this? What's the next step to take? But now we're like, oh, how good is it? You know, Max is the most amazing little boy. You know, we have such a great time with him um, that we thought, well, maxing out was born. We're going to max out someone's belief in what they think they can achieve, put an amazing team of people around them and get them through it. And at the end, they're just going to be going, how good was this? And, you know, I think it's going to be a great journey. So, Matty, we've both done numerous iron distance triathlons. You've done five of them. They're not an easy thing. How do you think the guys are going to cope with this? Well, an iron distance triathlon is a brutal day out and it's not just the day out itself. It's actually getting yourself to the start line. So they're in for it. Um, they've got a lot of work ahead. Um, but I've got to say, in terms of a physical feat um, to achieve something like this, I, I can't think of anything that I've done that even comes close to it and to give me the sense of achievement once I've finished it. So uh, I'm excited for them. I'm excited to be on the journey with them. Um, but they are going to know that they've got a lot of work ahead and uh, it's not going to be easy. Simple. You learn a lot about yourself doing a, an iron distance event. What do you think will be going through their head on the day? Well, what will be going through their head on the day is, you know, can I do this, you know, and, and there'll be doubts, um, there'll be fears, there'll, there'll be all sorts of things that'll go through their head. Um, and that's why it's really important to have a team of people around you when you're going through, you know, challenges, um, be it, you know, physical like they're going to go through or mental or, you know, any of those things. You know, when you've got a good group of people around you, you can get through pretty much anything. Um, so I, I think, you know, as much as they're going to doubt that they can do it, I think they're going to surprise themselves and they're going to be real proud of what they achieve in the end. So we're doing this for a purpose. We've, we've sort of put four ASD kids there in front of them to say, you're not doing this just for yourself, this is bigger than yourself. And we put them on camera. How do you think that's going to impact them? Yeah, I think it's important that, that we all sort of understand what this is about. It's about four ASD kids and it's about, you know, sending a message, message out to everybody that with the right people around you, you can get through the challenges in your life. Um, you know, for us, you know, when we got through the challenges with Max, we didn't do it on our own. We had, a, you know, a team of people that supported us, loved us, helped us, and when we didn't have the answer, could answer questions for us. You know, Max's therapist, the school, you know, his friends, our friends. And we want to build that sort of team of people around, you know, the athletes in the show so that, you know, they can understand and they can send a message out that, hey, you know what, we didn't think we could do it, but we did it and um, you know, 4 ASD Kids is at the, the centre of all of that. And importantly, you've done five, you've done five pretty, you're a pretty handy iron distance triathlete, but your wife is doing a first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and she's training hard. How do you think she's going to go against you on the day, 1st of July? How's that going to play out? Well, I'll tell you, my wife is um, a fighter. 
you know. So I, when she gets in her head that she's going to do something, you know, get out of her way and don't tell her she can't, that's for sure. So she hasn't got in her head that she can do it yet, though. That's, that's the challenge, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. It's about trying to overcome those. So on the day, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm hoping when, by the time we get there that that mindset's changed. If it hasn't, um, it could be a tough day out. So when she passes you on the bike, you expect to hear, <laughs> get out of my way. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I might just be supporting her on the bike. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, mate. Thanks, Matty. Cool.